Welcome to The Big Picture with Katrina Fulcher Rood and Ani Castilla Earls, where they discuss how research in speech language pathology can be implemented in daily clinical practice. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to The Big Picture. I'm Katrina. And I am Annie. And you are joining us for our fourth episode. Hard to believe that we've already made it that far. <laughs> Correct, and we are still in Denver, Colorado for ASHA 2015. <laughs> Funky background still. <laughs> and today what we want to talk about is a scientifically based measure that you could use to help identify children with language impairments. And this is a scientific based measure because it comes from research articles, right? It has been examined, it has good diagnostic accuracy, which means it has good sensitivity and specificity, and you can refer to episode two, two, when we're <laughs> talking and describing specificity and sensitivity. So the measure that we're gonna be discussing today is the percentage of grammatical units. And so for percentage of grammatical units, what does that really mean? And let's just start off and talk about typically developing children. What do we know with typically developing children and how grammatical units progress? So this is an interesting thing, right? Children normally, as part of their development, make grammatical errors, mm -hmm. right? As they are growing, they are making perhaps less grammatical errors sometimes. So if, let's think about uh, what is the percentage of grammatical units. So if a child produces 100 utterances, and 20% of those utterances are ungrammatical, we say that this child is, we say that the percentage of grammatical units for this child is 80%, mm -hmm. meaning most of their utterances are completely grammatical, right, Kat? Right, and that 20% of those utterances had some ungrammatical elements. But if I tell you that this child is two years old, you might think, oh, that is awesome that this child has 80% of the sentences are grammatical, right? So mm -hmm. this percentage of utterances that are grammatical is increasing with time. So we start with some research that shows that at age three, typically developing children on average are 70% grammatical. And at age three, they're 70% grammatical. And how do we expect that to change over time? Say if you have a three-year-old uh, going up to a five-year-old and then an eight-year-old. So what is interesting is that at age four, that, that average goes to 90%. And it stays in the 90s until around age eight. So we have 90% at age four, 93% at age five, around 90% at age six, and around 95% at age eight. By the way, at the end, we'll show you some tables that will summarize all this information. What is important is that between age four and eight, we know that typically developing children, most of their utterances above 90% are grammatical. And so now that we know that percentage of grammatically correct utterances for children that are typically developing, how can we take this information and what do we know about percentage of grammatical units for children that have language impairments? So this is interesting. We know that children with language impairments have more ungrammatical utterances. Hmm. So for example, at age three, we have around 38% utterances that are grammatical. Wow, that's a really big difference. If you go back and you can refer to the table, the graph that's up right now, we remember that typically developing children at age three had 70% grammatically correct units, and now with a language impaired child, they're at 38%. That's a pretty wide gap. Absolutely. Uh, by age four, children with language impairments are around 60% grammatical, and by age eight, they only go up to about 78. Hmm. That's another gap because remember we were talking that between that age of four to eight with typically developing children, they're at that 90% mark. Now individuals that are language impaired, they're at that 78% mark. So we're always going to see this gap in percentage of grammatical units between typically developing children and children with language impairments. And you can observe that in the graph that you're seeing right now, that gap exists through ages three to eight. And so now that we know about the percentage of grammatical units for both typically developing children as well as for children with language impairments, how can we use this tool clinically to help diagnose those children with language impairments? So this is 
relatively easy to do. So what will you do is you're gonna collect a language sample from a child, asking them to tell you a story. So you can tell them a story and ask the, ch the child to tell you the story back. You record the story and then you transcribe it. There are different ways to use language transcription. We are fans of systematic analysis of language transcripts sold. Mm -hmm. We use it in our research, we use it in a clinical practice. But for this measure, you can also use just a simple word processor and just start transcribing each utterance. And as you are transcribing the utterances, you are deciding whether each utterance is grammatical or ungrammatical. So let's think about what could make an utterance ungrammatical. There are different ways that they can be ungrammatical. Sometimes what I have seen children do when they're ungrammatical is they omit or they completely delete certain words or parts of the sentence, that utterance that really need to be there. Mm -hmm. So what are some items that a child may omit or take out of their utterance? Maybe the verb, maybe an auxiliary verb, maybe a marking that is required in an utterance. Sometimes they just might use a word, but they are used in the wrong context or wrong agreement. So instead of saying, I am walking, maybe the child might say, I are walking, right? So that will be an ungrammatical sentence. The child is not omitting a structure, but is changing it for something that is inappropriate. And you know what else? Sometimes I've seen that a child may insert or add a word that doesn't even need to be there, right? Correct. Absolutely. Or sometimes they do weird things with sentences and change the order mm -hmm. or do things that you, when you hear it, when you listen to the utterance, you know it's ungrammatical. The key here is that you know, if you're a native speaker of English, when you hear the sentence, you know that the sentence is ungrammatical and it's all you need to know for this measure. And that's something that I really love about this measure is that it's really easy to implement and do. This is something that is so intuitive to you. You listen to it and you're able to really understand, yes, it's grammatical or yes, it's ungrammatical. Absolutely. So at the end, you count the number of utterance produced by the child and calculate your percentage of grammatical units versus the percentage of ungrammatical units. And then you will know based on the age of your child, which is key here is that we know that four through eight years of age, for children who are typically developing, they will have around 90% of the utterances grammatical. So if you find a child that has 90% grammaticality, you shouldn't be so concerned about this child. Mm -hmm. On the opposite side, if you find a child that 50% of the utterances are grammatical only, then definitely it's a reason for concern. And not only a reason for concern, we have some research evidence that suggests that this measure, does this measure, percentage of grammatical units, have really good specificity and sensitivity. And in some cases, is better than actual standardized testing. And that's really important to know that we're being diagnostically accurate, so we're actually correctly identifying children and we're not missing children with language impairments who could really benefit from our services. And so let's talk about what is the big picture for today, Pat. So to review, it's a really great tool to use percentage of grammatical units when you're assessing a child with language impairments. It can identify children with language impairments. It can be one of those tools that you use for your diagnostic purposes. We know it increases with age, right? Children become more grammatical, but children with language impairments are always gonna be ungrammatical. You're not gonna find a child with, for example, specific language impairment that we just referred to in episode three, and you're gonna find that they're 100% grammatical. That does not happen. So this is a great tool to use. So try this in your clinical practice, collect that story retell, transcribe, and calculate that percentage of grammatical units. Let us know if you have any questions, and how can they let us know if they have questions yet? There's a lot of different ways you can do that. First, you can feel free to email us at thebigpicturevlog at gmail.com. You could also leave us a comment below, and we also have a Facebook page. Correct, so you can also post your questions there. We review the questions, we review the posts before they're public, but we can choose some of your questions and maybe address them in one of their further episodes. And what's great about using the Facebook page is that you will be able to have notifications of each time that we upload a video. And if you also want those notifications, please make sure that you subscribe here on YouTube so you always know when our new weekly video is up. Thank you for following us. It's always a pleasure. This makes us happy to be able to talk to you. So thank you for being here today. So thanks very much. And remember to keep on thinking about the big